Hello everyone and thanks for joining me. We've got the little Philco PT25 uh, wiring complete and you're just looking at some photos and video here that I put together to uh, illustrate what I started out with. Stay tuned. We're actually going to power the uh, receiver up for the first time and we're going to troubleshoot some uh, nasty noise. Kind of an unusual problem. So uh, we'll see if we can mitigate that. So uh, stay tuned if you're interested in uh, using a signal tracer and uh, seeing if we can identify the uh, root cause of the problem. You guys can see the photos I took along the way. They illustrate how bad the old rubber wire was. Uh, there's no way you could power this up and it was in such bad shape I elected just to uh, cut everything out, start from scratch. So it's always a great learning opportunity as well, trying to rewire one from uh, scratch. So you can see some of my uh, efforts here, cleaning up the uh, chassis itself. Got it polished up uh, nicely and uh, pretty much bare bones here. Checking all the tube sockets along the way as well. Those uh, Loctal tube sockets have known to uh, be bad, so I just took time to do DC resistance measurements here before uh, getting very far along into the uh, restoration itself. Stripping out those old uh, resistors, and then I elected to use some uh, cloth-covered uh, pushback wiring that I had. Of course, white here, I wanted brown for my uh, filaments, so I'm just uh, color coding those. And then we're actually going to bring up the uh, filament string or the heater string here and uh, just check each of the uh, tubes just to make certain that uh, our heater voltage is uh, correct. You can see there, I'm using that uh, original uh, candome resistor as well. I'm going to leave that in place for now. Here I'm breaking down the uh, IF transformers and uh, rewiring those, cleaning up the uh, capacitor areas as best I could as well. And then uh, you can see here all new resistors in place. And uh, you'll notice I placed the resistors back where they were originally. And uh, hopefully that will help me with the uh, wire dressing itself um, when it comes time to uh, actually get into the uh, rewiring, getting the uh, oscillator coil back in place, wired up, and uh, you can just see my progress to this point. For this particular receiver, you can see I used an electronic copy of the schematic itself, and I just have everything uh, color-coded as I'm doing the uh, component replacements in addition to the uh, individual wiring Moving along here to the tuning condenser itself, it was uh, fairly nasty, so I took uh, probably about 10 to 15 cycles there in the ultrasonic cleaner and uh, got it cleaned up. So it polished up and cleaned up really well and of course checked it for shorts uh, before placing it back in uh, circuit as well. And you can see here, I took time to uh, understand the uh, dial cord winding. I'm just using the old dial cord, which I'll need to replace. This actually snapped off while I was working on the uh, receiver itself. And along the way, I used some deoxid there on the tube sockets itself and a uh, nylon brush just to remove any uh, oxidation there that the uh, pins would come in contact with. In addition, each uh, tube itself was uh, thoroughly cleaned all the pins due to the uh, dissimilar metals. You can see here I've got the uh, loudspeaker uh, back in place and mounted. And the rewiring and component placement is uh, almost 100% complete at this point. Just wrapping up here with the uh, B-plus itself, getting the uh, resistor mounted that takes the place of the fill coil and the uh, capacitors itself. Still need to uh, tidy this up. Let's go ahead and uh, power up the receiver now and get into the uh, troubleshooting issues that I uh, mentioned earlier. You guys can see in here I've got the Transitone Philco PT25 uh, back together. 
Still got a few uh, minor things to do here, but the problem I'm having is uh, some distortion, some birdies, and uh, you can hear this roaring uh, type noise as well. So let's do some troubleshooting here. I'll flip this over and uh, see if we can identify the uh, cause of the uh, issue itself. You guys can see I used uh, pushback cloth covered wiring and uh, that helped neaten up the uh, restoration a lot uh, neater than uh, what we started with for sure. And again the original design used an electrodynamic loudspeaker so I've substituted a 10 watt resistor which still needs to be secured to the uh, chassis itself here for some additional heat sinking and uh, just a few other things uh, to tidy up the uh, new dial cord as well but uh, let's go ahead and do some troubleshooting here let me turn the radio back on and uh, we'll start with the uh, audio section itself and work our way back to the RF section see if we can identify the cause of the issue itself. So all of the grid voltages and the B plus voltages have been confirmed to be within operating range. So in this video I'll forego those steps and we'll just focus on signal tracing itself to uh, hopefully diagnose and uh, make a repair. Let's get started. We'll start things off here at the uh, power output tube, the uh, 35A5 for those wearing uh, earbuds or headphones. Just keep in mind, you hear some loud noises, pops, etc. So just be mindful of that. I'll have to turn the volume up as well here just a bit. So we definitely have the uh, noise at that location. Let's work our way back here to the uh, 7 Charlie 6, the uh, detector AVC. Let's see if we have the issue here. And you can see I have enough gain with this particular uh, signal tracer I can just get in close proximity to the tube itself. And uh, you can hear the noise. So let's move back to the uh, 7B7, the 7 Baker 7, the IF amplifier, and uh, see if we have the problem here. Again, you can follow along on the schematic. We'll check the plate first, and then we'll move over to the uh, grid itself and uh, see if the problem uh, shows itself there coming from the uh, first IF transformer. You guys can hear the noise without actually touching the plate, but one thing that's interesting, when I touch the plate, I seem to still have some birdies, but uh, the distortion itself seems to disappear. Let's check the grid now of the 7B7 tube. It's 
quite interesting. You can hear the noise on the grid itself of the 7B7, which is fed directly from the first IF transformer. But when I go to the plate, being the output in the additional capacitance itself of the uh, probe, seems to uh, somewhat mute or influence the amount of noise. I think that provides uh, a clue. Let me double check the uh, plate one more time. Then again, if I get in close proximity to the plate without a direct connection, So I think the noise that we're hearing is coming from the uh, 7B7 uh, tube or the uh, input stage uh, feeding nap. So let's back up and look at the uh, 7 alpha 8 tube, which resides uh, right here. That's the uh, converter tube, oscillator, does a lot of things. And uh, let's check off the plate there, which feeds that first IF transformer, and uh, see what we can discover. I think this is going to be another realm, and I think the closer we get to this, to what you're talking about, Revelation chapter 19 will, will have a really new meaning to each and every one of us. Yeah, basically, and I agree, and we document this, that was actually my theory. So, quite interesting. Of course, I hear some hum. Again, that's to be expected. We're coming off of the plate with the uh, B-plus voltage using a uh, 56 picofarad capacitor here on the uh, signal tracer to help mitigate some of the hum. But um, it seems the uh, problem itself resides in the uh, IF transformer. I've done an IF alignment and uh, peaked the uh, transformers. One thing I'm curious about, the old Philco IF transformers use the old uh, color codes. Rewired everything, trying to be mindful to get everything correct. And what I'm speculating on the uh, first IF that uh, I've got the uh, transformer wired incorrectly. Now I think the uh, primary side is fine. I'm thinking the uh, secondary side, I've got the leads reversed and the signal itself feeding over to the uh, grid of the uh, 7B7 amplifier here, the IF amplifier is uh, potentially out of phase and uh, that can cause uh, those type of distortions that uh, we're hearing. So um, let me uh, take the power off of the uh, receiver here and discharge the uh, capacitors. Let's hook up a scope and uh, look at the signal and see if indeed uh, we're in phase or out of phase back over to the uh, grid here of the 7B7. And if we're out of phase, then uh, I'll probably try to uh, pop the uh, cover off of the uh, transformer itself so I don't have to uh, redress these leads through here and see if I can just uh, unsolder and solder back the uh, connections here on the transformer and uh, see if that actually makes any difference at all in the uh, noise that we're uh, hearing. Again, let me uh, power this off, discharge the uh, caps here, and uh, let's hook up the uh, O-scope, the signal generator, and uh, generate a frequency at 470 uh, kilohertz or kilocycles, that being the IF for this particular receiver. We'll look at channel A and uh, channel B 
and uh, compare the uh, results. You can see I've got the signal generator hooked up RF wise injecting a uh, 470 kilohertz signal here to the uh, first IF or to the plate of the uh, 7 alpha 8 tube, the uh, converter, and then we'll hook up the other oscilloscope probe here back over to the uh, grid. We'll look at the uh, signals here and see if they're in phase with each other. You can see with everything hooked up, we're out of phase. If you look at the uh, screen here, the uh, bottom being the uh, grid and what's in yellow being fed through the IF transformer. So again, I'm just speculating uh, this is possibly the issue. Let me uh, do some work offline, see if I can get the oscillator out and uh, get the IF can uh, removed from the transformer itself and reverse the uh, secondary leads. We'll repeat this test and then we'll power the receiver back up and see if indeed it makes any difference whatsoever. So there you have it. I reversed the leads on the uh, transformer on the secondary side. I could have done the uh, primary as well. Again, I wanted to keep the uh, lead coloring correct. Let's uh, power up the receiver and see if it uh, made any difference at all. We'll use the uh, non-contact method here and just turn the signal tracer on. And uh, then we'll listen to it through the uh, loudspeaker as well. So you can see it took care of a lot of the, uh, I don't know, oscillation or feedback that was occurring. There's still a few little birdies to work on. That could be my uh, lead dressing. Or again, it could tie back to uh, one of the uh, tubes or uh, contacts here on the uh, Loctals itself. I'm not going to really uh, be worried about that. But, uh, the water that I shall give him, that uh, water that I... That's tuned off a station now, and you can hear how clear that is compared to what we had before. So just reversing the uh, leads on the uh, IF transformer in this case and having everything in phase back over to the uh, IF amplifier seemed to uh, make this particular receiver uh, more happy. I'm going to go back and make a few modifications here to the uh, design. The schematic called for a 0 0.04 microfarad cap here on the output tube. I went back with the 0 0.02, so I'm actually uh, filtering out, or allowing, I should say, more of the uh, high frequencies to come through. Being my loudspeaker doesn't have a surround, I'm already passing a lot of the uh, high frequency information over to the loudspeaker, so I'm going to increase that to at least the 0 0.04 microfarads and uh, try to attenuate some of the higher frequencies and uh, make the uh, loudspeaker that I reproduced without a uh, surround uh, to be just a little sharper. Again, this will not be a daily player. It was more just a challenge to uh, rewire it and uh, see if I could get this scene playing again, which I've done. I appreciate you guys uh, watching the uh, series. You guys uh, take care. Stay well out there. No, no, I don't. I've never, tr I've never tracked. Uh, you know, each person that claims to be professional.